Hi there. Welcome back to this video series of reinforcement learning with TensorFlow agents. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. Last time, we gave you a quick overview of reinforcement learning and its applications. In this video, we're going to teach you how to use TF agents to quickly train a card pool agent. So what is TF agents? TF agents is a reliable, scalable, and easy to use reinforcement learning library for TensorFlow. While there may be a number of open source RL libraries you can use, TF Agents is the one we recommend. TF Agents is great for learning reinforcement learning because it comes with an extensive set of code labs, examples, and documentation to help you get started. You can use TF Agents to solve realistic and complex RL problems with scalability and develop new RL algorithms quickly. You can easily swap between different agents and algorithms for experimentation. It is also well tested and easy to configure. TF Agents is built on top of TensorFlow 2, so all the easiness of TensorFlow 2 comes for free. You can use the eager mode to quickly develop and debug your code. Keras helps you easily define your neural networks, and TF.function automatically speeds everything up. TF Agents is also modular and extensible, you can define your own custom environment or agent quickly. And lastly, our extensive examples and documentation can help you get started really fast. Here's an overview of TF Agent's components. At a high level, the process to train a RAR agent is, we use our agent to interact with the environment so that we can collect experience trajectories. We then feed the tra trajectories to our agent to train it so that it becomes better to receive the rewards from the environment. We keep doing this until the agent has good policy to extract the most rewards from the environment. Let's talk a little bit more about environments and agents. First, the environment. TF Agents supports a wide variety of environments, GIM, Atari, PyBullet, DeepMind Control, and B-Suite. TF Agents also has an interface to Mujuko. Recently, Mujuko was acquired by DeepMind and is now free to use. Next, Agent. TF Agents has implemented a number of classical and state-of-the-art agents, such as DQN, Reinforce, and PPO. They are fully tested and ready to use as black boxes. That's a nice thing about TF Agents. You don't necessarily need to know how to implement these agents yourself but you can still use them effectively for your own needs. Now let's walk through an example of using DQN agent with TF agents. Remember that DQN is a kind of value-based method. You will see why in a minute. DQN stands for Deep Q Network. Here, Q is what we call action value function. It basically means if the agent is in state and is going to take action A, What's the expected total reward for that action over the time horizon? And the optimal action value function Q star gives the best value possible from any policy, which is the first equation. So think about this. Intuitively, if you know the reward values for all possible actions given a state, it's pretty easy to pick the best action for that state, right? Now our job is to represent the Q function with a neural network which leads to the second equation. We're not going into the math here, but basically it tells you how to update the neural network parameters based on the experience trajectories we collect during the training gameplays. For a more detailed discussion on DQN, I highly recommend the reinforcement learning course by DeepMind and the University of College London. Now we come back to this overall picture of TF agents. For the environment, we're going to use the built-in CardPo environment. TF Agents provides an easy interface to load environments from Jim. We just call load function here, and TF Agents will take care of it. We call that we are trying to keep the pole balanced by moving the cart left or right. The agent receives a reward of positive 1 if the pole remains upright at each time step. It's important to understand the environment specifications since not all agents are compatible with all the environments. Here we print out the specs of the observation and action. You can see that our observations is a tensor of four float values, which are the car's 
position, velocity, the pose, angle, and the velocity, respectively. The actions is just an integer that can be 0 or 1, which means we move the cart left or right. Now we define our Q network. As I mentioned just now, we are going to use a neural network to represent the Q function. The network is pretty simple and consists of a few dense layers. The last dense layer needs to output a probability distribution over all possible actions, which then allows us to pick the best action. We stack all layers together and we have our Q network. Next, we define our DQN agent. We basically pass the environment specs and Q network to the DQN agent. Next, we define how we collect the experience trajectory. All agents contain two policies. Agent.policy is a policy that is used for evaluation and deployment. Agent.collect policy is a second policy that is used for data collection. In the original Atari DQN work by DeepMind in 2015, there's a technique called experience replay to make the network updates more stable. Basically, at each time step of data collection, the transition data are added to a circular buffer called the replay buffer. Then during the training, instead of using just the latest transition to compute the loss and, and the gradient, we compute them using a mini batch of transitions sampled from the replay buffer. This has two advantages, better data efficiency by reusing each transition in many updates and better stability using unrelated transitions in a batch. We also call these transitions trajectories. We'll see how these trajectories look like in a minute. To store and sample these trajectories for training, we set up a replay buffer. We're going to use a framework called Reverb. It is open sourced by DeepMind and is specifically designed as an efficient framework for experience replay. To set up the Reverb replay buffer, we first create a reverb table using trajectory specs, sampling rules, and etc. Then we start a reverb server. Next, we create the reverb replay buffer using the reverb server and the table. Note that we set sequence length to two since this is required by DQN agent. Now we create an observer to the replay buffer. We create a replay buffer observer here it will be added to the driver in a minute so that the trajectories can actually be collected into the replay buffer during the training. The last piece of the puzzle is driver. Driver is the utility that runs the experience collecting loop for a certain number of episodes or steps. We pass our replay buffer observer to the driver to collect the trajectories for training. After training data is collected into the replay buffer, we can sample them out as a TF dataset. Here's how our experience trajectories look like. It contains important information such as action observation and reward. Finally, we have all the pieces in place and can start training. We can simply run a training loop here. In the loop, we first use the driver to collect experiences. Then we sample some trajectories from the replay buffer and lastly, train the agent. That's it. We can visualize the average reward as the training progresses. Eventually, the agent will become so good at carpool that the pole never falls down, as you can see in the GIF here. To sum it up, today we introduced the TF agents to you and walked you through how to use the built-in DQN agent to easily solve the carpool environment. Although it seems there are many steps to set it up, it's actually pretty straightforward once you understand the overall workflow and the key components. Solving other tasks will follow almost the same flow. In our next episode, we'll be teaching you how to build a board game app using TensorFlow agents and TensorFlow Lite. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.